Okay, so I've been using the M4 and the M4 Pro MacBook Pro for about a week now, and I think that a lot of people are missing the point of these machines this time around. So in this video, I wanna help you determine whether M4 or M4 Pro is right for you. So first off, the unboxing is exactly what you'd expect from Apple, aside from the fact that you now get a polishing cloth if you order the Nano Texture Display, which is an extra $150. So I have the base model for both of these, but I only got the nano texture display on the M4 MacBook Pro. So that brings the price of that up to $1,750, whereas the base M4 Pro is $2,000. But if you compare base model to base model, there's a $400 difference between these two. Now, before we get into the testing, let's take a quick look at the design and the specs of these machines. So first off, you can see I have a space black and a silver option. So you can now get space black on the base model chip this time around, last year, you had to get the Pro chip to get this new space black color. You also get the same amount of USB-C ports this time around, because last year, if you remember, the M3 Pro had an additional USB-C port on the side, but now both of these machines have three USB-C ports. However, they are not the same. So M4 is going to have three Thunderbolt 4 ports, whereas M4 Pro is going to have three Thunderbolt 5 ports. So Thunderbolt 4 is going to provide data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabytes a second, and Thunderbolt 5 is going to double that at 80 gigabytes a second. And it also has the ability to dynamically allocate up to 120 gigabytes a second for video bandwidth when needed. And by the way, another key thing to note here that was not the case last year is that the M4 and the M4 Pro both have the same external display support. So that is two external displays up to 6K 60 Hertz. So unlike last year with the base M3, you know, I couldn't use my dual display setup, but now I can with the base M4, which is nice. But as far as when you open up the MacBooks here, you can't really see a difference between the two. We have the same keyboard. The display specs are the same. We have the 14.2 inch mini LED Pro motion display with that glorious 120 hertz refresh rate but this year on both models apple did up the sdr brightness to 1000 nits when outdoors so with the m3 it was 600 nits so that's great and of course the display will peak out at 1600 nits when watching hdr content so i did actually take both of these machines outside because i wanted to test the not only 1000 nits of sdr brightness but also the nano texture versus non nano texture and i will tell you right now that nano texture is absolutely the way to go if you are somebody who works outside if you work in a coffee shop or just really anywhere where there's a lot of natural light because you know i've realized it before but this really opened my eyes up to how many reflections are actually hitting the screen and kind of taking away from you know what you should be seeing on your screen so this nano texture really diffuses the light really well and i'm a big fan of this especially down here in florida where it's just sunny out most of the time but as far as the boring stuff the internal specs the m4 does have the 10 core cpu and 10 core gpu whereas the m4 pro has the 12 core cpu and 16 core gpu and as far as ram and storage again both of these are the base model so m4 is going to be 16 gigs of ram and 512 gigs of storage you can also go up to 30 two gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage for M4. And for the M4 Pro, we start at 24 gigs of RAM and also 512 of storage. And you can also go up to 48 gigs of RAM and four terabytes of storage. So really, if you were to upgrade the M4 RAM to 24 gigs and match the M4 Pro, you're really only paying $200 for the upgraded chip and those extra CPU and GPU cores. Now, even if you did upgrade the RAM on the M4 to 24 gigabytes, it's not going to be the same as as the RAM on the M4 Pro because M4 Pro has higher memory bandwidth. So the M4 has 120 gigabytes a second and the M4 Pro gets 273 gigabytes per second. So the M4 Pro will be able to handle more tasks at once, especially when they are more intensive. And by the way, these are both the 14 inch models. So you can also upgrade the M4 Pro to 16 inches. You can't do the M4, M4 is only 14 inches, but M4 Pro, you can take it up to 16 inches for an extra 500 bucks and that does also add two cpu cores 
four GPU cores, and a 140 watt power block. And speaking of power, I should also mention the battery life here. So the M4 gets 16 hours of web browsing and 24 hours of video streaming. M4 Pro gets 14 hours of web browsing and 22 hours of video streaming. And speaking of web browsing, I want you to go to Google and type in your name or your phone number. And if your name pops up with your address and all your personal information, you're gonna need today's sponsor, Incogni. Data brokers and people search sites are constantly collecting and selling your personal information and posting it online for anybody to find with a simple Google search. This includes information like your phone number, your address, your email accounts, and much more. I used to get tons of random spam messages, especially during the election time, but then after I got my information removed from all these sites using Incogni, they've been reduced by at least 95%. And thankfully, I've never had anybody show up at my door to steal my identity, but I'm sure that's happened to some people. Their automated system works around the clock, reaching out to data brokers on your behalf to request the removal of your personal data. It's super simple to use. You just create an account, tell Incogni what data you want removed, and sit back and let their system do its thing. So if you want to clean up your name online, check out Incogni. You can get 60% off of an annual plan by using my special link down below in the description, or just use code BUTCH at checkout. Okay, so now let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about the benchmarks and then also some real world testing. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind throughout this entire you know video is that the M4 Pro has two cooling fans inside, whereas the M4 only has one cooling fan inside. And I will tell you that you can hear the difference. I did not think you'd be able to hear as big of a difference between the fans on these two, but you can. Okay, so let's start off with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to test out the read and write speeds for each of these. So the M4 scored a 3343 on the write and a 2929 on the read compared to the M4 Pro, which had a 4038 on the write and a 5017 on the read. So very impressive scores. We do still have, you know, green check marks on the M4, so it's not like the M4 is any slouch. It still performs great, but you can see the big difference there and read and write speeds for the disk. Now, if you go on to the Cinebench test, this is where it also gets a little bit interesting. So you can see that on the M4, we scored a 13, 368 on the multi-core and a 2178 on the single core, giving us an MP ratio of 6.14. And on the M4 Pro, we got 18764 on multi-core and 2199 on the single core. And that was an 8.53 MP ratio. And as far as Geekbench 6 goes, we did get a 3678 on the single core and a 14345 on the multi core for the M4, compared to a 3860 on the single core and a 2371 on the multi core for the M4 Pro. And then we did also run the GPU test as well using OpenCL. We scored a 37817 on the M4 and a 60. 853 on the M4 Pro. And we did also run a speedometer test as well. This is a web browsing benchmark to see if there's any difference in web browsing speeds. So we got a 44.3 on the M4, 46.0 on the M4 Pro. So not a big difference when it comes to web browsing tasks, which that might be important to note if you're somebody who uses a lot of web applications. And we also ran an Xcode benchmark. So we can see that the build time for the M4 was 156 seconds and the build time for the M4 Pro was 135 seconds. And then of course we did some real world testing. So we started off with a Final Cut Pro video export test. This was a 26 minute 4K 60 FPS video and it exported on the M4 MacBook Pro in about five and a half minutes. And on the M4 Pro, it took about two and a half minutes. So similar to what we saw with the M4 and M4 Pro Mac minis, the Pro chip is significantly faster with video exports. Doing a little Final Cut Pro export and the M4 Pro spins up the fan a little bit, but the M4 does not. Interesting. And then after that, I wanted to test out the file transfer speeds. So we transferred over a 65 gigabyte folder that had over 100 files in it. And that transferred over in two minutes and 45 seconds on the M4 
2 minutes and 19 seconds on the M4 Pro. And keep in mind, that is with a Thunderbolt 4 connection. That's a Thunderbolt 4 SSD. If it's Thunderbolt 5, it's going to be even faster on the M4 Pro. And then after that, I played around a bit in Lightroom and I was testing out the AI features in Lightroom and just adjusting the color of an image. And then we also, at the same time as editing in Lightroom, we had Final Cut Pro exporting another video. We had several tabs open in Safari. I even had music production going in Reaper. I had like almost 30 tracks or over 30 tracks on each of these playing at the same time in Reaper. So we had everything going at the same time on both of them. And this is where I was really impressed with the M4 MacBook Pro because it didn't give me a beach ball at all. It did not freeze up. It not, did not give me any issues whatsoever with that 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now you can see there is a little bit of swap being used there around 1.5 gigabytes. But what I found even more interesting is that with the M4 Pro, despite having 24 gigs of RAM, there was more swap being used during the same process. You'll notice on the M4 Pro, we got up to three gigabytes of swap being used, and there were three different red sections on the memory pressure. We didn't have any red on the M4 Pro. So I found that to be very interesting, but neither one of them had any issues with all of these tasks. It took up a lot more memory for some reason. Lightroom took up so much memory on the M4 Pro. I'm not too sure why it wasn't like that on the M4, but regardless of what this shows, neither Neither one of them had any issues running all of these tasks at the same time, which was very impressive. So with all that being said, and after you've seen all these tests that I've run over the past couple of days, you know, which one should you buy? Should you buy M4 or should you buy M4 Pro? And I would say that, you know, M4 is now viable for pro users, in my opinion. Like this is not just a for web browsing and daily use only machine. Like it's a legit machine, even for heavy workloads. And I do have to say that the 16 gigs of RAM is a big reason for that. I think 16 gigs of RAM is going to be enough for most people. Now, another big benefit, again, I didn't get to test this in my you know week of usage just yet, but we do have the same amount of ports on both models. So if you end up, you know, having to plug in random things throughout the year, you know, you're not going to run out of ports on the base M4 because you have three Thunderbolt ports, unlike last year where you only had two. Also, this color right here, Space Black, is now available for M4. So just another reason that you don't necessarily have to go M4 Pro if you were a big fan of the Space Black color. Now again, battery life, you know, you're gonna have better battery life, not just for basic daily tasks like web browsing and watching videos, but also when you're doing more intensive things. So my M4, I had these both charged up to 100% and then ran all these tests. The M4 ended up with 76% remaining. The M4 Pro ended up with 64% remaining. Okay, so I've been praising the M4 a lot. Let's talk about the M4 Pro. Who is the M4 Pro MacBook Pro for? And I would say that, you know, you're looking at a MacBook Pro, so the chances are, the odds are, that performance is your top priority. And I'd say that the base M4 does give you plenty of that, but if you absolutely know that you need more than the base configuration, 16 gigs of RAM and or 512 gigs of storage, just get the M4 Pro. Like the extra benefits you will get will be well worth the cost for whatever demanding tasks that you throw at it. And even if it's not something very demanding, because again, the M4 handled those demanding tasks just fine, surprisingly. But you know, even if it's just basic video exporting, you're gonna see significantly faster export times. You know, the file transfers are gonna be maybe 20% or more faster if you use Thunderbolt 5. So I just think the M4 Pro this year really offers the best bang for buck in terms of performance because it is a good bit faster when it comes to pretty much everything that you would do. Like, yes, the M4 is good enough, but if you want true, like, professional performance, the M4 Pro is amazing. Like, I feel like the M4 Pro is almost equivalent to the Max chips on previous years. Maybe not quite, but that's the feeling I'm getting after using the M4 Pro for a little bit. And also, if you run everything off of external drives like I do, Thunderbolt 5 can be beneficial for those faster transfer speeds. But the reality is Thunderbolt 4 is likely just fast enough for anything you throw at it. But, you know, unless you have a crazy monitor setup, but it is still nice to know that you do have Thunderbolt 5, uh, you know, maybe for future proofing. I don't like saying future proofing, but that could be something, you know, that you might want to look at if you are considering the base model with that base 512 gigs of storage because you will likely be using external 
you know, devices, whether that be an SSD and or a dock, a Thunderbolt dock. So those are my thoughts on the M4 and M4 Pro MacBook Pro. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in a comment down below and also give this video a thumbs up. Now, if you want to see more testing, if you want to see different types of testing in my upcoming review for the M4 MacBook Pro or the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, I'll probably do a review on both. Let me know what you want to see in those videos in the comments down below. I always learn from you guys down there who tell me, you know, and open my eyes to different things I did not think about testing. So I would appreciate if you gave me some suggestions down there. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.